Hey folks, uh, today's topic is derivatives of higher order. So that just means that you're taking the derivative of a derivative of a derivative. So for instance, we have um, the first derivative. That's the one that we worked on last unit. We did that with the, what's called the power rule using the derivative shortcut. We also have then the derivative of the derivative, which would be called the second derivative. And then the derivative of that is called the third derivative. And then you could just keep going from there to whatever derivative that you wanted to calculate. I wanted to talk a little bit about notation before we get going. If we call our function y, the first derivative is called y prime. The next derivative is called y double prime. Hold on a second here. All right, so we have this notation here. We have y. Then we, the first derivative would be called y prime. The second derivative, y double prime. Y triple prime, and then after that, we just write Y with like a 4 up there. We put it in parentheses so we know it's not to the fourth power. If our function is named in terms of F instead of Y, so F of X, the first derivative would be F prime, then F double prime, F triple prime, and then we do the same thing, F of 4. And then another way that we can derive or write up the derivative of Y is this notation, this D dx here. That means the derivative of, so when I say dy dx, that means the derivative of y. This would be the second derivative of y, this is the third derivative of y, and then so on from there. So d of n of y over dx of n, or sub, I don't know how you say that actually, I don't think it's of, I think I'm saying that wrong, whatever. Okay, so example find the second derivative so f double prime of this function so i want to double check first to see if i have to do any rewriting and as we look at it, it looks like we don't have to rewrite anything because everything is in the right format of the power rule so i can just follow the power rule which is multiply and then subtract one so f prime five times negative five is negative 25 x to the fourth oh one more thing I would expect you to be able to do all of this without a calculator. So this is on the non-calculator portion of the test. We've got to get better at, especially because I look at you guys now as calculus kids, we have to get better at simplifying sort of basic arithmetic. So in this next part, I'm going to take this 4. I'm going to multiply it by 2 thirds. Well, 4 can be made into a fraction as 4 over 1. And I have 4 over 1 times 2 over 3 would end up being 8 over 3. The 4 times the 2 makes an 8. The 3 times the 1 makes a 3. And then I subtract 1. If you can't do that in your head, just go into the margins and write up what you want to do. You want to do 2 thirds. And you want to multiply it by 4 over 1. Well, go do that and see what you get. So you don't have to do it. At, you don't have to do it all in your head. If you're struggling with doing it in your head, do it on the margins of your paper. But I do want you to be able to do it without a calculator. Minus 3 times 2 is 6. Take away 1 would be 2. And then just 7. The derivative of a constant is 0, so that's gone. And the derivative of x to the 1 means that I'm going to subtract 1. I wouldn't have any x's. Now, the second derivative is the derivative of this derivative. So 4 times negative 25 is negative 100. Subtract 1. Plus, and here's where you can start to learn some shortcuts. You can do 8 times 3 and then divide it by 3 and clean that up. Or you can notice that when I times by 3 and I divide by 3, those are going to cancel each other out, and I would just get 8. 6 times 2 is negative 12, and then the derivative of x is just 7. So now I can box that in and put it up on my fridge. So pause, the, pause here and see if you can do this one on your own. Okay, let's see how you did. I didn't have to do a rewrite, so I can just start distributing. I need the fourth derivative, so write small here. F prime of x is equal to, okay, 6 over 18 reduces to be 1 over 3. Take away 1. 2 times 5 is 10. Take away 1. 4 and the 24 reduce and leaves a 6 on the bottom. Take away 1. 3 times 3 is 9 over 8. Take away 1. 2, take away 1, and then the derivative of 5 is a constant. So there's my first derivative. Now I'm going to take the second derivative. So 5 over 3 does not reduce. Take away 1. 4 times 10 is 40. Take away 1. Okay, my 3 reduces with the 6 again, so that's going to leave a 2 on the bottom. 
The 2 and the 8 are going to reduce. That's going to leave a 4 on the bottom. And then I've just got my constant of 2. That's the second derivative. So my third derivative. So 4 and the 3 don't reduce. So that's going to leave me with 20. Take away 1. 40 times 3 is 120. Take away 1. The 2 and the 2 are going to cancel. So that's going to be 5x. And then I got 9 fourths. And finally, we get to the end here, the fourth derivative. So the times by 3 is going to cancel with the divide by 3, so I just get 20x squared. 2 times 120 is 240, and then minus 5. So I will give you ones like 120 times 2. I expect you to be able to do that. I'm never going to give you 120 times, you know, 42 or something like that. If there's anything that gets real big down here, it gets kind of big, but we're, we, it's going to be pretty simple multiplication. All right, so the, there's the kind of the big idea. Now we're going to start to get into some details. What happens when we can't just start deriving it? So we want to do what's called a rewrite first. So if you look at this, this is not all set up to derive. So now I'm going to rewrite. And remember, your rewrite is not your derivative. It is still y. So don't get confused and start deriving this, but then only rewriting this. You want to rewrite. So I like that first format. I don't like a root, so I'm going to convert it into one-third as an exponent. I don't like x's on the bottom, so I'm going to bump it from the bottom to the top. That's going to cost me a negative exponent. Now I've got it set up. Now I can start doing my derivative. So y prime equals... That would be negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. x squared multiplied by the 1 third. Now I'm going to take away 1 from this. You can either do this in your head or you can do this in the margins. If you go over to the margins, I would do 1 third, take away 1. Well, I have to get a common denominator, so I'm going to make this into 3 over 3. So 1 third take away 3 thirds would be negative 2 thirds. Negative times a negative is a positive 2, and then take away 1 means you're going to get smaller, but it actually looks like it's getting bigger, but these are negative. So I need to find the third derivative, so I'm going to keep going from here. So y double prime. 15 times 2 is negative 30, take away 1. Okay, negative 2 thirds times 1 third would be negative 2 ninths. x to the, now this part I'm going to do in my head, I'm taking away another third. So that's taking away 3 of them, so that would be negative 5 thirds. And then negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. x to the, take away another one, negative 4. So they want us to do the third derivative, so I'm going to go again. y triple prime would be negative 30. Okay, a negative and a negative makes a positive. That's going to be a 10, that's a 27, none of that's going to reduce. So 10 over 27 x to the take away another 3 would be negative 8 thirds. Negative 6 times negative 4 would be positive 24. Take away 1, negative 5. Now last unit we had to clean all this stuff up. You, I kind of consider you guys calculus students now. So we know that you could clean it up if you had to, but we don't actually clean it up unless we really want to. So you could like bump this back to the bottom. You could bump this back to the bottom. But you don't have to unless your answer demands it. So I would encourage you to try to pause here and try to do example four on your own and then come back and we'll do it together. All right, let's see how you did. So I need to do a rewrite. So y equals, this would be x to the 3 fourths minus 5x to the 11 thirds. I need to find the third derivative. So dy dx is my first derivative. So that'd be 3 fourths. Take away 1 would be negative 1 fourth. Then 11 times 5 is negative 55 over 3. x to the take away 3 would be 8 thirds. Now I'm going to do my second derivative. And if you just want to write prime here, you can be a wimp, mathematical wimp, and do that, but it, it's the same. 
So if you wanted to write y prime and y double prime, just because they use this notation doesn't mean you have to. So I would multiply, that would be negative 3 over 16. x to the, I'm taking away 4, so that would be negative 5 fourths. Minus, ooh, this is my first, I, I need to do this on the margin as well. 55 times 8, that's something I'm going to need to do. I can't do that in my head, maybe you can. So I would go 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 5 is 40, plus another 4 would be 44. So that would be 440 on the top over a 9 on the bottom. And that would subtract another 3, so that would be 5 thirds. And it wants the third derivative, so we've got to do this one more time. The third derivative. I still don't know how to say that. I'm going to have to look that up at some point. All right, can I do this part in my head? Yeah, yeah. 5 times 3, they're both negative, so that would be positive 15. 16 times 4 is 64. If you can't do that in your head, go over to the margin, write it out. I'm taking away a fourth, so that means I'm taking away four of those, so that would be negative 9 fourths. Subtract 440 times 5. I can't do that in my head. So I've got the 440 over here. I'm just going to multiply it by 5. That's 0. That's 20. Carry the 2. That's 20 plus 2 is 22. This turns out to be 2200 over 27. And I take away 3, so that's to the 2 thirds. So you could probably do the next one without my help, but this is asking us to find f double prime of 2. So that means that we need to figure out, first of all, what's f double prime. And then after we figured that out, we would, um, after we figured that out, then we would just plug in 2. So let's go ahead. It'll be a good color. I just feel like I've used purple a lot. Oh, man. How about a nice gray? Boring. So do I need to do a rewrite? I like this. I don't like that. So I do need to do a rewrite. So my rewrite would be f of x equals 2x to the fourth minus, I got to bump that up. So that would become x to the negative 1 plus 5x. Now I can derive. So f prime of x equals 8x to the third. Multiply, that would become a positive 8, but I would subtract 1, so that's minus 2, plus 5. I need the second derivative, so I'm going to derive again. That's going to be 24. Take away 1 would be 2. That's negative 16. Take away 1 would be negative 3. Now from here, we've got to evaluate this at 2. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to figure out what this is when I pull what happens when I plug 2 into this. So we would have f double prime of 2 is equal to 24 times 2 squared. Subtract 16 times 2 to the negative 3. Now we can do this without a calc. Lots of people in class when I was doing this, they, they thought of pretty clever ways. 2 squared is 4. They thought of turning this into 25 and then working backwards. I think about whenever I times by 4, I double it and then double it. So 24 doubled is 48. 48 doubled is 96. Minus, okay, this negative exponent means it flips to the bottom. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to flip it to the bottom. Well, it's going to flip to the bottom and become cubed. So 2 cubed is 8. So 96 take away 16 over 8 is 2. 96 take away 2 is 94. All right, folks. So you're on your go get them.